again you guys are here to learn this effects but none of you are gonna subscribe anyways i will show you this amazing trick it's really really easy starting with we would need a can and a plane and set it like this for now you can use a cylinder as well and if you are wondering where did i got this scope get this add-on which is called blender kit and it is available for free this is not a paid promotion because i'm a poor channel first is we gotta make sure our object has enough and evenly distributed geometry by the way if you get any doubt like what i am pressing to do any stuff you can see on the left corner so here i can see it's not very evenly distributed so what i will do is go into the edit mode by pressing tab and press ctrl r to bring up the edge loop tool and i will increase the number by scrolling my mouse wheel left click and right click to set it at the middle and now we have even need to see the geometry now we would need some geometry on our plane as well so i will go into the edit mode and subdivide it around six to seven times if needed you can do eight times as well we are done with preparing our object for now let's start with the real black magic on our car cola cola before we move ahead for those who haven't subscribed yet I'm giving you a warning. So, selecting the can, I will head to the modifiers tab. But before we go ahead, what we need to understand is we want to calculate the distance between this one and every other vertices on the plane. For that, we can use vertex weight proximity. Now, this badass modifier is gonna do our half of the work. So, first, we want to select our target using this eyedropper. The target would be our plane next we want to change the mode right now it is add object and it is not gonna consider the geometry so we need to select the geometry and we need to select the faces it is only gonna consider the vertices of our plane we needed to check and consider the vertices on our can as well and for that we need to assign it through this vertex group right here right now there's no result found what we have to do is go into the edit mode select all the vertices go to that object data properties right here and create a new vertex group click on this plus icon and you will see a group i will name this group as new pacific ocean assign and all vertices will be assigned to this group exit after the edit board by pressing the tab going back to the modifiers and selecting a group in this and we are done with this not really by now you are all getting bored with all this boring shit full of lecture so let's watch a movie i mean let's see some result for that add a string wrap modifier and then select the target which is the plane and again select in the vertex group but this result is quite the opposite so click on this double arrow icon and it will inverse your result and something like this will happen so i'll change this highest value to zero and to understand it better you must change it to the render view if i change the highest value if i try to increase it as you can see it is stretching but this is closest to this plane are getting shrink wrapped to the plane so for now i will set it to 0.1 for now it is stretching but not spreading outward for that let's use a displace modifier and wow it's a big cock now again let's click on the vertex group and select our group and click on inverse icon it's still too much so let's dial down the strength and it should look like this now it looks really 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 awesome but it is weird sometimes like here so to fix that just move the displace position up before the shrink wrap and boom it is working just fine to make it even more smooth and more better just like you always want your life you can apply a subdivision modifier and move it to the top of the top. By the way, the shortcut to applying the subdivision modifier is by just pressing Ctrl 1 and it will apply automatically a subdivision modifier as you can see here. So you will have to just drag it along. I'll change the number to 2 for now. And lastly, the most important source to make it even better is by changing the fall off right here, change it to smooth and it looks even more smoother. Now we are done with the bullshit of playing around with the modifiers. There will be a little bit of modifier ahead as well. Thing we have to do is use a data transfer modifier. So if I click and search again for data transfer and here what we have to just do is select the source which is our plane, select the face corner data. So what exactly we want is the normal direction from each of these vertices. So for example, 
this what is normal direction is this which is the z direction so i want that data to be applied on the only the affected nearest vertex on the plane so i'll just click on custom normals and boom nothing is happening because of course we have to again select the vertex group and flip around the result and we get this so if i turn this off and on you can see something is happening something looks better but we can make it even better so the final punch is using a shader editor so let's head to the shader editor so let's divide our panel from here and go to the shader editor so right now what you have to do is add a mix shader in our scene okay i'll like drag it right here and make sure it's connected to the second one so first let's create the mask for that we will use four node which are texture coordinate which will be set to object and select the plane as object then add a mapping then we will separate the data into x y z now if we look at it we can see the x looks like this y looks like this and z looks like this i'm sure you know we have to use the z value so let's just use a color ramp to find it tune it even more dragging the color ramp here making it even more better looking like this and finally connecting this to the factor so it works as a mask and connecting shader to the surface now we can't see anything happening because we have to connect the shader to as well fast 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 apply a shader to our plane as well so i will click on new and i will make it a bit metallic so reduce the roughness change it to a little bit dark gray and i will just copy this by pressing ctrl c and go back to our can texture and i will press ctrl v to paste it right here and then what do you have to just don't stop it please please i want you to what are you doing principal bscf and connect it to the shader one right here and you will see the boom result and now you can see it is melting and like a butter by the way switch render engine to cycles to get the perfect result my amigo <sighs> we have arrived at the final part of the video which is really important and that is to subscribe to my channel to get that liquid animation going on as well on our plane select the plane and go to the physics tab and click on dynamic paint yeah click on canvas and add the canvas first check the anti-aliasing not necessary option but just do it for the sake of it second change surface type to waves that is really important and lastly we need to make a brush so that we can have those waves so no obviously we cannot have our can as a brush because it's gonna f everything up so we will duplicate our can remove everything except the subdiv and go back to the physics tab and select dynamic paint and this time switch to the brush and add brush now let's go back to the plane and select our coca cola collection make sure to hide the duplicate can now hit that space bar as hard as you want to spank someone and you will see this ugly result let's make it even better first let's add a sub modifier after our dynamic paint on the plane of course and you know the shortcut key of course which is the press ctrl 1 to directly apply a subdiv modifier on it and you can see subdiv is applied also just make sure to right click and shade it smooth to get even better result as you can see it is even better now the second thing that you have to do is you have to adjust or play around with the physics tab which is the settings of our dynamic paint so for now i set the influence to 0.7 that is the sweet spot i find it for myself you should find for yourself as well so let's go through the settings the first one time scale and speed go hand in hand together so they affect the speed of the waves of course you can make it slow you can make it faster damping affects how like liquidy or how dense you want the waves to be spring will make sure how much the waves bounce and how much they don't of course and smoothness i will set to 2 because i need the smoothness the most because we want to make it more dense liquid i'll set the damping to 0.2 and that should do it for us if i hit the space bar again i should get a good result than before as you can see i am somewhat satisfied with this result after some times it will just stop and there will be no waves so we want continuous waves and that is because our object will continuously rise from our plane and there should be continuous waves of course to make that happen we have a secret trick not really a secret but so what we can do is enable our brush and disable our cylinder 
selecting our brush can i'll press i and it will insert a keyframe on it to see what is happening exactly let's go to the graph editor and here you can see it has applied a keyframe to various channels which is the location rotation and scale right now we don't need anything except scale so i will press delete and delete them now we want some noise going on our x scale that is really easy go to the modifiers here select the add modifier and click on noise it will add noise and it will continuously scale on that particular axis for the scale i will set it to 8 and for the strength i will set it to 0.2 make sure to copy this using this icon and apply on all the other scale channels like that so all the other channels has the scale as well and now if you play you will get this kind of result it is taking so much of our time so if you want to have a quick result what you can do is just turn off the subdivision from the plane and from the can as well and then you can check the result it will work faster and you will know the result faster and this is the perfect thing that we wanted we are seeing those continuous waves happening just change around with the result to get the desired result you want of course don't worry if it looks ugly you can just again turn on the subdivision and it will come back to its senses let's also set up the scene and animate it divide our panel so that we can have one with the camera view and one with the 3d viewport quickly add a camera to the scene the first thing that i would really love to do is change the focal length of our camera and set it to 80 that would give our product a more bold look for the lighting you can just set up a light on the right like this i have set it and one on the left and I have set up a big light from the front so it highlights our product a lot. So let's start animating with our scene. We have to animate our can which is the most basic thing. So keyframing is very crucial where you are going to position your can frame by frame. So at the first frame of course our can is going to be below the plane and at the 10th frame what I want it to is just come up with the blast like that. Not that too high but around here that would be perfect now let's go to the handed frame and make it come up a little bit more around like this and i'll again press i and insert a keyframe let's go ahead to the 140th frame let's move it up around something like here now we want it to land somewhere so we can do is just duplicate this press ctrl and move it double time up like that we want to keep it at the center at the 140th frame and press i and rotate it on the y this much degree this should be enough but what i'm going to do is not make it go all the way up we can keep it right here I'll press insert a keyframe then i will go at the 160th frame make it move up like that rotate on the y like that i can press insert a keyframe now it should look something like this now to finish it off let's head to the 220th frame there's no formula or logic for why i'm using the particular frame i'll put it by 180 degree now it is rotated i will take it here and insert a keyframe it is still in there it has not settled down the reason is because i will let you know soon enough and now to make it land go ahead at the 250th frame and let's just make it land it has landed press i to insert a keyframe again and good enough i'll enable auto keyframing here right now because i don't want to press i every time if we look at the scene in the render view and right at the start what i've made sure is the main logo or anything of the can is not visible enough so that we can reveal the coca-cola logo and the whatever brand that would be at the ending so that is that and we have animated our can just like that that was really easy wasn't it wasn't it guys how would you rate my teaching skill was it one lakh out of ten we can adjust around the keyframes and make it go slow or fast as you would love to now next thing is we gotta make the camera follow our can now after it has reached somewhere like this and it is about to exit the frame i will press insert a keyframe on our camera and move it to about here let's make it see the camera something like that insert a keyframe now that is moving up with the can it is going way ahead so let's just ahead adjust it so that it follows the can not go ahead of it now at this frame i would like it to rotate as well the camera of course in the opposite direction of the can something like that that would look really nice so it should be somewhere at this diagonally to the frame of the camera so it will look like this oh oops i forgot to insert a keyframe before this so <clears throat> i will go at this frame insert a keyframe and i will just reset these values 
so that it doesn't move around that much and insert a keyframe so let's see what is happening and now it will be stuck here the can is gone but we have to follow it so around this frame i will rotate it even more so that it fully rotates 180 degree and let's see the result now it's not following it please follow the can as you have seen by just entering keyframes politely in the blender you can get this kind of result now that is looking really good but we have to duplicate this light and add them here as well because we don't see any lights on our scene we have to do that for this one as well and let's just rotate it like that make it bigger what i was talking about is revealing the can at the end was that is why i have kept a keyframe where it is still in the air like that and then landing on the ground so when it is landing what i will do is easily just rotate it on the z axis and make it reveal like that and insert a keyframe now if you look at it it will reveal like that you can get it even better if you go at this previous second last frame and rotate it a little bit like that now our background kind of looks like ugly we can fix that as well. I will add a cube in our scene. Now, what I'm going to do is just delete the faces on the sides and then move it back. And let it scale it a little bit on C. Now, make sure that you apply the same material on this that is on our original plane. After that, I'll just bevel these edges to make it look even more smoother. Now, that does not satisfy our need. So, I'll scale it on the x-axis like that now if we look at it it kind of looks like this in the middle and that is giving it a really nice visual so it will look something like this it is a really amazing result now you can enable those modifiers and everything and then render with that and you can get the amazing result out of it